Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be looking at plotting with the Plotly package today. In this first video, we're just going to do a comparison between a matplotlib plot and a Plotly plot. So if you don't already know matplotlib, it's actually okay. Um, but if you do know matplotlib, you're gonna see on the left side of my screen, code for writing matplotlib plots. And on the right hand side of the screen, we're gonna generate the same plot with Plotly, just to show you the difference between the two. I'm doing this because most people are transitioning from matplotlib to Plotly when they encounter this video. So here we go. The first plot that I would like to make is this one. This is the sine function from zero to two pi. Now, I've got numpy imported, I've got matplotlib imported, I've generated some functions, I've generated a domain, and over here on the other side in my plotly code, I've generated the exact same domain. So what I wanna do is I wanna generate this plot with plotly. So if you know matplotlib, go ahead and put me on pause and go through this code. If you don't know matplotlib, just suffice it to say, I wanna generate that plot with plotly. So let's do it. I'm going to import plotly underscore, or I'm sorry, dot graph underscore objects as geo. Now this is the standard way to start your plotly plots. Graph objects are what the name says, they're graph objects, and geo is the common nickname for those. Now I've already imported NumPy, I've imported my functions, I've imported the domain, so let's just get started with the graph object. So I'm gonna say my figure equals geo graph object dot figure. And I'm gonna open a parenthesis and press enter. Now what you're gonna notice in Plotly is that it takes a little bit more typing to generate your plot. And as we type this, that might not seem like the best thing to do, but the output that we get, I think you're going to agree is much, much better. Okay, so geo dot figure. Now graphic, or graph objects, there are lots of different types of graph objects. So if I do geo dot, oh, sorry, let me, let me do this out here, geo dot. Ah, oh, geez, okay. <laughs> sorry, let's comment that out, let's run it so it knows what graph objects are now. Okay, so now it'll actually give me my help. Geo dot, okay, and there are lots of different types of graph objects. In fact, there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of types of graph objects. This guy over here is actually a scatter type graph object. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say x equals x, y equals y, or I'm sorry, y equals f of x, because my f function was the sine function, and then fig dot show. Now this is the simplest possible setup I could think of, right? And notice the parallels here. In matplotlib, I did X, I did a Y, I did a color, the color I'll get to in a minute, and then I did all my labels, which I'll get to in a minute, and then I did a show. So in my matplotlib, if I just did those blocks of code, that's what I would get. In plotly, this is what I get. But notice something in Plotly. As I hover, it automatically gives me a highlight of where I am. I can click on the mouse and highlight and zoom in. If I want to go back, I click home. If I want to take a picture, I can take a picture. If I just want to zoom in in general or zoom out in general, I can. All of that comes natural with Plotly. Now, let's build the rest of this graph. Oh, and notice that the grid was already there. I'm gonna build an X label, a Y label, and a title. Now, this is gonna take a bit more typing, but it's okay. Fig dot update underscore layout. And I'm gonna do my title equals, and let's see, I did F of X equals sine of X. I'm gonna do my X axis title equals, I called it X. I'm gonna do my Y axis title. I'm gonna call that Y. Let's run that guy to make sure everything looks okay. So now notice that I've got basically the same plot. 
Uh, it left aligns the title. Okay, so what? Not a big deal. Something you could change, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And the only other thing I didn't do was change the color. So I'm going to come up, up in here in my graph object scatter. I'm going to say my um, marker equals. Now, this is where Plotly does something a little bit different that takes a little bit of getting, getting used to. It, it wants what's called a dictionary, right? So I'm going to give it a dictionary where my color equals red. And I'm literally just going to spell out the word red. And there we go. And of course, I can hover over it. The marker shows up in red. I've got all of the various. I can zoom, right? I can zoom back out to home. I could snap a picture and save it. Um, all of that good stuff that comes naturally with Plotly. Now I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna do marker size equals 20. Oops, and okay, I made a mistake. Now Plotly gives you this massive error message when you make a mistake. It didn't know what marker, or didn't know what marker size was. Okay, so, at the moment, I think it's actually marker dot size. Nope, it's not marker dot size either. Okay, that's fine. At the moment, I'm gonna leave this one off because I didn't wanna change the marker size anyway. I actually wanted you to see what the error message would look like. And I'm gonna stop the video there as your first Plotly plot. Hopefully at this point, you can agree that Plotly generates nicer plots in the long run, but I also think you see that the code is a little bit more complex to build it. Once you get used to it, it's really not so bad. Okay, in the next videos, I'm gonna generate a couple more slightly compli more complicated plots. See you there.